If we think about our conversation on the Knight's Tale in Chaucer's The Canterbury Tales, we might come to the conclusion that there were two main points to the discussion yesterday. In terms of the first major point, it related to our conversation on love and what your understanding of love is as it you know, may manifest itself in your own life, as it may be represented in your culture. And the conclusion that many of us came to was that love was difficult to define, difficult to articulate, if not impossible, and that there were many different forms of it. This puts us into a pretty nebulous territory um, in terms of the concept, and it raises the question of whether or not we can use the concept as an actual academic you know, tool or notion in order to guide our reading. As we talked more about the concept of love, though, we began to think about this idea of, of interchangeability. And this connects with our larger conversation on the interchangeability of objects and goods in our contemporary culture, and the idea that every or many of the things we have access to can be simply exchanged for equally valuable things. When we applied this notion to the concept of love, many of us found that it was rather and perhaps surprisingly easy to apply this concept. We were thinking about um, whether or not you know, love is something that can be defined um, by one particular person. So we have this story in The Knight's Tale where we're looking at something that we might describe as love at first sight and how for you know, our sight in Palamon, Emily is the only possible uh, object of their affection and their love. And this idea that they would fight to the death for her was very strange for many of you. In fact, when we asked ourselves what it was we would give up our lives for um, in terms of something that we loved, many of us, again, had a very hard time putting that into words. And several of us expressed that as a function of the fact that we look at love as being interchangeable. There could be several potential people or many potential people that one might love over the course of their life. And I'm not here simply talking about romantic love, but all the other categories that we've been thinking about as well. We started to ask ourselves about whether or not it would be likely or possible that we would find individual people in our lives that we would associate as you know, the one or the romantic notion of love. And most of you were generally dismissive of that notion. And again, I would say that's something that says a great deal more about our time and culture than it does necessarily about the concept of love itself or, or its potentials. So we were thinking about these things and hopefully by doing so we gained a little bit more access into our culture and a little bit more access into the world that Chaucer is, is working to represent. I don't want to necessarily imply that there is a time when you know everybody believed in true love or love at first sight and that romantic notions of love were perhaps common for long periods of time before today's more interchangeable notions of love became became more prevalent, but I do want to stress the importance of the representation and what Chaucer is doing here through the Knight's Tale as he's giving us a representation of true love and has us reflect on it and consider it. And I guess maybe the question we might come to at the end of our reading and at the end of our discussion is whether or not any of you are willing to consider the Knight's Tale as being anything other than absurd. The answer to that question, I think, is up to you, um, uh, or, or certainly it will, it will come from your own experience. But we might then turn a little bit to the other major uh, issue we addressed in our conversation, and that was the issue of anachrony or anachronism. Um, we will, when we look at the Knight's Tale, one of the, the things that we find that's strange about it is that it presents us with, again, this mashup of cultures that I started talking about a little bit uh, a few weeks ago when we were thinking about the collision of the classical and Christian worlds during this essential time period. If we think about the fact that we have a story that takes place in a Greek city that is ruled over by Roman gods and which has a very English um, uh, system of aristocracy, we might come to the conclusion that the Knight's Tale presents us with a bizarre uh, world, uh, a world that is not real, a world that shows us many different cultural currents colliding in one particular place. And you might ask yourself, well, why is that the case? Was it the case that Chaucer just didn't know? And I would say, no, that's absolutely not the case. Chaucer is deeply familiar with the Bible. He knows Aristotle. Um, he is well versed in the differences between his own culture and the classical world and the classical tradition. So whatever is happening here, it's happening intentionally. And we started to ask ourselves, why is that the case? Well, we might answer that by thinking about the effect of the story. And the effect of the story is to give us this very profound commentary, I would say, on love. Now, most of us found it to be a deeply sexist commentary, and, and we can certainly debate that, and we'll talk more about it next time. But we might think about what is the essential effect of this mashup. In class, I talked about how 
Chaucer carries this notion of the Wheel of Fortune uh, quite close and how we had thought about um, how he was perhaps removing this concept of the traditional Christian God from the center of that wheel and replacing it with more human concerns. In this instance, we might say that the idea or the concept of love has been placed at the center of the wheel and that this is a story about reflecting on love and what love is and how love can affect your life. Certainly, it's not every kind of love. We have here, again, romantic love or this idea of love at first sight and what it can do to individuals. If we look at the story this way, we might notice something interesting that as part of this commentary, as part of this removal of perhaps the Christian God from the center of the Wheel of Fortune, he has inserted these, these Roman entities, uh, Venus and Mars and Diana, um, and these are the gods who kind of rule over love or this problematic form of love um, that arises uh, for the heroes of this story. Now that might take us in a number of different directions to write about and think about in our papers, but if we begin from the premise that this is a story that presents us with a version or an idea of love that might be strange to or alien to our own culture, and then follow that up with the idea that this is a story that comments on love by associating it with pagan gods, we might begin to develop some ideas about what it is Chaucer is trying to say or what some of the broader implications of the Knight's Tale may be. Many of these questions are going to find, I think, um, a really interesting expression once we get into the Wife of Bath's tale, which is what you're reading for next time, which will present us with a very different version of love, and based on our conversations in class, a, perhaps a version of love that many of you are much more comfortable with, although I doubt many of you will admit that. Anyway, I look forward to that conversation. I hope you're enjoying the reading, and I will see you in class next time. Bye.